What are you guys trying to tell me? I bet I know. I'll come back this afternoon and rake that out again when I feed the main cow herd, but for now, it'll keep these calves happy. We finally got that rain that we've been promised all these times, and we, we got a pretty good little downpour here the other day. Enough to really soak into the ground and even make some puddles. This is awesome news for the hay field that has been desperately needing this moisture to get going, and it is also great news for the winter pasture. Our winter pasture is about 60 acres, and it'll carry roughly 20 pairs from December to sometime in summer, usually May or June is when they come home. And that pasture is 100% dependent on rainwater to grow. So this little storm that we had yesterday it ought to go a long way to really perking that grass up and helping it start to grow. And that's a good thing because I want to start taking cattle over there at the beginning of next week. But before we can do that, there's a few things that I got to take care of over there. And hopefully that's what we're going to get done today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. We just showed up over here at the winter pasture and there are two main things I wanna to try to get done today. The first is getting these cattle guards cleaned out and then the second is I wanna at least make a lap around the perimeter, check all the fence and kinda of just see what shape things are in. It looks like this cattle guard is mostly full of leaves so hopefully this is a fairly easy job to do with the blower but I know that there is some dirt and gravel in this one as well so I brought a pick and a shovel. I don't know how hard this is gonna to be to get this out of here without picking the whole guard up, which is what I'm really trying to avoid having to do. But we're just gonna give it a try and see what we can accomplish. Starting to think I should have done this before it rained. What I'm learning is the leaves aren't really the problem. It's that you get a bunch of sticks in here so that you can't really blow the leaves out. You can't really rake the leaves out. Uh, I think I'm just gonna resort to scooping them out by hand. Like these kind of sticks is what's messing up the operation. Are you not a fan of the blower? I think we're all done for a minute. Yeah, you're cool. Good girl. Well, like so many things I do, it's not perfect, but it's a heck of a lot better than it was. It occurs to me that some of you may not understand what a cattle guard is or why I'm taking all the time to clean it out. 
and basically what it is, it's, it's a visual barrier. The cattle see this, they see the gaps in between the pipes and they don't think that they can walk over it for fear that they might slip a hoof through one of those pipes and then who knows how deep that is in a cow's mind. So the problem becomes when these fill up with dirt and leaves or whatever else and you start to lose that visual effect because there's not these big gaps in between the pipes. And an animal might look at that and think that they would have no problem walking over it. This is all done in an attempt to not have to have a gate here. This is obviously we're, we're on a road and we drive through here all the time. When I first started bringing cattle up here, there was a gate here, so you had to stop and open the gate every single time he wanted to come or go. And with the cattle guard here, it's a lot more convenient because you can just drive right through. We got a shovel somewhere too. So that's one cattle guard down, one to go. I don't think the other one's as bad as this one, but we still need to clean it out a little bit. Hey, somehow you got in there on your own when you were afraid of the blower. You can't do it now. We've been driving around taking the inventory of the condition of the fence and I think in the past I've mentioned this or I've at least thought it, I don't know if I said it out loud, but I want to try to utilize hot wire a lot more over here than I have in the past just because this perimeter fence is really old and a lot of this it's, it's almost like it, it basically needs to be torn out and replaced and that's just probably not really an option. So. I think the more realistic option is to run a hot wire in conjunction with the existing fence. The problem is, at least here on the north fence, is that the brush is so tall and that it would, it would be impossible to try to run a hot wire through here the way things are now. So I think what I'm going to have to do is hook up my brush hog to the new hall and, and mow a little strip along this fence line just get as close to the fence as i can so that i have a nice clean area to run a hot wire my plan is to do this on the north fence which is the one that i'm at now and then down on the south fence as well the south fence is pretty clean i can probably put the hot wire up the way things are right now but we're gonna need to get the tractor over here and do some work on this one i don't even know if i can drive through this Oh man, you see, I knew there was a reason I didn't want to drive through that stuff. Got all these spiky vines here in my winch hook. Hopefully I can get them out with the, my Leatherman because I ain't touching them. Might just uh, drive this down the road and let that do it. So I guess the bad news is, is the fence is gonna need a little bit more work than I thought, at least to get the hot wires up. My plan was to go around and patch spots today, which I, I didn't find too many. The ones that I did find were bad enough that I know I'm gonna have to go home and get some different tools. It's a little bit more of a major repair than just a Band-Aid fix like what I was hoping. So I think when I come back here, I'll bring the tractor with the mower, I'll bring the fencing supplies that I now know that I need and I'll bring some hot wire and hopefully the next time I'm over here I can get everything ready to go. The good news is is that this little rain shower has 
really help the grass. I can actually notice a difference and it's, it's only been one day. So I'm optimistic that the feed is gonna start coming on out here like I need it to. And that when I do bring cattle over here in a few more days, they'll actually have something to eat. But for now, that's about all I can do over here. You ready to do something else? All right, let's go. I decided to do the gravity round bale feeder today. It's just so much easier. Besides last year, I bale grazed a bunch of that triticale hay and I didn't really notice much benefit from that like I have with other types of hay in the past. Something like ryegrass, oats, wheat, barley. Those all kind of seed and sprout themselves and give you some good grass for grazing in the springtime, but I just didn't notice that with the triticale. Of course, I have bale grazed plenty of triticale this year as well, so we'll see this spring. Maybe last year was a fluke, but time will tell. You guys seem hungry. Goodness. Why are you grumpy? Huh? I don't know if I want to feed him with that kind of attitude. Why are you guys hissing? What's this about? You got a bad attitude there, buddy. I really don't need or want to pet these cats, but man, the way they start hissing and spitting at me when I put their food down, I'm afraid one of them's gonna take a swipe at me one of these days. It's a surefire way to get your cat food cut off. How'd you guys do? Grandpa would have made this about a foot taller. All right, clean it up, guys. This shelter here is the perfect height to hit your head on. And I remember feeding calves down here with Grandpa and he used to say the same thing. Why didn't I make this about a foot taller? I'm just kind of curious. I'm probably jumping the gun by checking on this right now, but I wanted to walk down here to the backfield and look where I spread my leftover hay seed over my aerated ground and see if I can see anything happening yet. And actually, I think I am. I know it's probably not gonna translate to camera very well, but I do see a lot of this stuff starting to sprout here. If you look closely at the grass, you notice that some of these bits of grass are a little bit different color and a little bit taller than sort of the established grass that's already here. And again, if you were here in person, I feel like it's a lot more obvious than it's gonna be on camera. Let me take you over to a spot where I didn't have a very established stand of grass and show you, um, it might be a little bit easier to see over here. All of this grass that you see sprouting in the cow trails is the, the hay seed that I planted. So it is, it's starting to, it's starting to jump out here a little bit. This is good. Much more difficult to see in the established pasture, but like this is a, a seedling, this is a seedling, but this is good. There's actually still some seed out here. The birds didn't get it all and it is actually growing. The next thing that worries me is that as we move into the next months, December and January, what usually happens around here is the geese transition from wanting to land in the flooded rice fields to then wanting to land in open fields such as this pasture. The problem is, is that wherever the geese land, they will eat that grass down literally to the ground. They will absolutely destroy whatever is growing out here. So I'm hoping that either the geese just don't target this area, which is kind of like yeah, that's that's not gonna happen. They will. The other hope would be that maybe this hayseed has a chance to get tall enough to where the geese won't like it. Because I have to assume 
at a certain height, they're not gonna wanna land out here because it'd be hard for them to walk around, hard for them to move. But even more than that, it would be harder for them to take off because when they try to beat their wings, they're just hitting it against grass. So that would be nice if one of those two options happened, but honestly, I don't think either one will. I think that this is gonna be a problem that I have out here. So I can either just let them land out here, let them do what they're gonna do, knowing that they're gonna eat that stuff right down to the ground and then hope that before they do that, the roots get established enough to where it will come back. Or I could try to do some deterrent methods, which I tried last year. Um, I think I will try to do that again, but uh, again, using the bird scare tape, I think only works for a couple weeks until they get used to it and then they'll probably have no problem landing out here. And another thing that I've thought about doing is just getting back into goose hunting, turn a problem into a solution. If the geese just insist on landing here, then I may as well be sitting here with a shotgun waiting for them. And let me be clear, before people start getting upset, I wouldn't be hunting the geese just for the sake of keeping them off the grass. I mean, that would be a nice benefit of it, but we would also eat everything that was taken like any ethical hunter would. And this is where I kind of get outside of my, um, I don't know, like what people's perception are of hunters. Do people actually think that hunters don't eat the game that they take? Because that's ridiculous. I've actually never known another hunter that didn't eat whatever they got. Um, and I, I just hope that people know that. I think most of you do, but maybe some of you don't. So we'll really just have to see how this plays out. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll try the deterrent methods first, I think, but if I just absolutely cannot keep them out of here, then it might be time to run to town and get some duck stamps. And one more thing that I wanted to talk about today, and that is my New Holland tractor. A while ago in one of my shorts, I had talked about why I don't have a loader on this tractor. And for those of you that missed that, the only reason is that the a brand new loader for this, I think when the tractor was new, it was like an $8,000 option. So in current times, I'm sure this is like a $15,000 option now. And I just can't justify spending that kind of money on a loader, although I, I can't ignore the fact of how useful having a loader would be. That in addition to the fact that modern loaders don't really have the same amount of reach as like the loader on the 8N and I'm not sure that the loader that would fit on this tractor would be able to reach the top tier of hay bales in the barn. I ended that short by proposing the question of would people be interested in watching me build a loader for this tractor that would meet all of my criteria, namely being able to reach that top tier of hay bales. And a lot of people said that they would. So this is something that I've been thinking about a lot and it's not because I don't want to run the 8N anymore. I actually really enjoy driving that tractor but it would be nice to have two tractors with loaders on them in the event that the Aiden breaks down or, or is having issues or for whatever reason, it would be nice to have a backup handy. Not to mention the fact that this tractor would be a little bit better for loader work than the 8N just because it has power steering, it has front wheel assist, and those two things are very, very handy when you're doing loader work. So as I've been kicking this idea around, I've been thinking about like, how would I actually do it? And New Holland makes a kit for this tractor that would set me up with the joystick and everything. And I would probably go that route rather than just trying to source all those parts from scratch and plumbing it, putting it all together like that. It'd be a lot easier to just use their joystick that plums into the hydraulic system of this tractor and then make everything else beyond that myself. So I guess one of my big questions is, do you guys know of a good source for hydraulic components? I'm going to need four hydraulic cylinders, a bunch of hoses and fittings. It'd be nice if there was just one place where I could get all that stuff, whether it's an online retailer or one that I actually would have to go to. Or maybe it would be better to just try to find a used loader and either adapt that to this tractor or just rob the hydraulic cylinders and a bunch of the hoses and stuff off of it and then use those parts on a loader frame that I make myself. 
that actually, it's probably the smart way to go, but finding a used loader is not always the easiest thing to do. So I don't know if this is a project that I will do this year or ever, honestly, but when I think about these things, I try to think them all the way through to the end, figure out where I would get the parts, what everything would cost, what it would actually take to actually do it before I make a decision. So if you guys have some good sources for hydraulic parts or just any sort of thoughts about this project, please let me know. You guys almost done? Just really struggling to get up this last bit of hay here. Poor Rivet's reaching under that fence to get that hay. I guess he doesn't realize he can actually walk around to the other side of the fence and eat it. <laughs> what do you say about a guy like that? He's very handsome. You getting tired? Ready to go? Come on, let's go. I guess that's gonna do it for this one. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.